Welcome to this tutorial for the making of Love in the Time of Advertising on how we created the hair for our characters. So this is Old Henry from our short film Love in the Time of Advertising. And as you can see, um, to start out, we're going to create our geometry, which we will use to generate our hair curves from. Uh, you can use a sphere or a cylinder. And we're going to adjust the amount of geometry that this sphere has to start with so that it's easier for us to manipulate. Now, because I need open end and bottom surfaces for the script we use to generate our curves, I'm going to delete the top and the bottom to make sure that they have open edge loops. Now I will stretch out the sphere to make it more usable um, as a hair surface um, to make it more strand like and then make sure that the roots aren't so um, clamped together at the bottom now this is a generic hair strand shape so I'm just gonna give it some bend um, so that I can place it on the head um, and then once it's on the head I will go ahead and make whatever adjustments I need to Um, so now we should almost have a surface that um, should follow the curvature of the head pretty well. So we can take a look at that. And uh, that's a good starting point. I'm going to take the pivot of the, the geometry and put it to the center of the bottom. Um, and this will be useful both for placing it and for... Um, painting the geometry on using um, a script I uh, downloaded off of Creative Cache called um, SP Paint 3D. So I'm going to duplicate it without any history and go ahead and snap it to the head and then go ahead and um, do the initial placement for it scaling it down and um, morphing and uh, editing the geometry so that it matches the look I'm going for. Um, this is one technique to do it uh, by placing all the uh, individual hair strands um, or hair geometry for creating the hair curves uh, by hand. Uh, next up I will show you how to uh, use a script to paint the geometry on there in a more consistent and easy fashion. And there you go. You can see a nice example. Now I'm going to show you um, how to use a script to paint the hair onto the surface faster than placing it manually. I'm going to start by taking my original hair strand and moving it to the origin using the grid snap tool. Uh, now I'm going to open up the script SP Paint 3D by typing it in the Mel command line. And then I will select the G I want to paint with, being the hair strand and the body, um, and adding it to their um, respective sections in the script. Um, then I'm going to adjust the scale, which it paints um, the geometry uh, at. It does a, a variation between a high and a low clamp. Um, in this case, 0.4 and 0.6. And I'm going to see that that's a little bit too big for what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. I'm going to adjust the scale down, 0.2 and 0.3. And I'm going to go ahead and try again. And you'll see that the geo tries to follow the surface normals of the geo you're painting on, which gives us a, a nice effect of having the hair kind of flow backwards. Skipping ahead, um, I have now placed all the guide geo strands for the hair um, into place on the head in a styling that I like. Um, paying attention to make sure that um, on the nape of the neck, I make the geo wide enough to cover um, the ends of the hair down there. 
Uh, I'm now going to type in the custom Python script that our uh, rigor David Boxer wrote for generating and grooming hair strands um, in Maya based off the geo. So now I've loaded the script um, and now I'm going to isolate, select one of the strands um, and then select um, one of the loops. I'm going to change the density so it's a little bit less. Um, and then the script is going to generate um, hair curves based off the geo uh, of the hair geometry. So you can see there it is. Um, now I'm going to use some of the grooming tools to trim um, some of the hair strands randomly to um, uh, lengths so that the hair is not always the same length by taking a little off the top. And I'm going to adjust it because that was a little bit too much. So I'm going to bring it down so it's a little bit less percentage. That looks a little bit better. You can see that now I have random variation to the length. Um, and then I'm going to use the Muss It Up script to just add variation to the actual hair um, curves. Um, and then I will go through and I will individually adjust uh, hair strands to match the styling that I would like. Uh, now you can see I've styled the hair to um, a way that I like, making sure that the hair consistently spread out throughout the entire scalp. Um, I am now going to create the hair system. I'm going to create a sphere to assign the hair system to to start with, which makes it easier. Um, I'm going to just create a regular sphere and I'm going to um, create hair. Um, should be set to pain effects and nerves curves with a UV count of one and a V count of one uh, and make sure that it's static. Um, this is now going to generate the hair system, which is assigned to the sphere. I'm going to bring the display quality down so it doesn't slow down our system when we assign it to the hair by selecting all the hair curves and going to assign hair system, hair shape one. Actually, assigning the hair system can be a time-consuming process, which I've um, chopped out for now, but um, give it a few minutes. Um, and then once it's done, and if you have your um, strokes turned on, you should see that... Um, there's a hair system now attached to all the hair curves on the head. Okay, now that we have the hair system signed, um, we're going to go ahead and adjust it um, for what we need. We're going to obviously need more hairs per clump, taking up to 25. We're going to go ahead and adjust the thinning so that um, it also adjusts the hair length um, uh, per clump. Um, and we will change the clump width to make them a little bit thicker um, while making the hair width individually a little bit thicker too. Uh, we'll make sure that it in, interpolates um, between the uh, individual hair clumps and then go ahead and change the hair color to be gray, um, adjusting the specular power and the translucency to settings that I found work for this one. We'll also add some color randomization. Um, I found that the saturation and the value randomization works best. Um, and it's best to start with a low number and then work up. Um, also turning uh, visible and reflections and refractions on in the render stats. Uh, now we'll go ahead and make sure that the hair system is set to static just in case so that when we move our model around it won't go ahead and try to sim it. Um, V-Ray has also created a hair shader, the V-Ray Hair Material 3. Um, that works really well, especially when using uh, GI in V-Ray. Uh, we'll go ahead and create one of those. And then under the hair system uh, attributes, uh, V-Ray will go ahead and turn on hair shader. And then at the bottom of the hair system, we'll go ahead and assign uh, the hair shader into that uh, slot that's open. Um, and then the last step is just adjusting the shader to the look that you want. It has a pretty uh, good set of uh, presets. So um, play with those and adjust and then uh, render for your final look. Now looking at our final render of the old Henry hair, um, we can see that with a couple of scripts and a little knowledge, um, we can create um, really nice looking hair for our characters in Maya um, using um, V-Ray or Mental Ray or the Scanline Renderer. Um, thank you for watching this tutorial and look for more making of uh, love in the time of advertising tutorials to come in the future. Thank you.